Hello, my friends, and welcome to another First Impressions video. Ah. Very, very, very loud intro music. I suppose it is always that. Now, this game was originally called Operation Citadel, and I actually have a First Impressions video on it. However, it has hugely changed since that time. Uh, such that the developer decided to rename it to Hexes of Steel. So, let's have a look and see what's changed. Campaigns. I didn't know that Japan had a western or eastern front. Let's go with Japan. I'm in the mood for some Japan. The Battle of Kalkin Gol. Okay. We have uh, very NATO -y, NATO counters, but at least with pictures of the stuff on rather than just the counter. That's actually quite cool. No joint tiles in this, so you can see here, the mountain tiles are all just, you know, individually kept in their hexes, rather than being a big entity or something that's a mountain. Uh, not, nothing, uh, you know, not the biggest deal, but obviously gives the game a bit of an aged feel when it, when it uh, has an individual hex look, rather than linking terrain features together. Fourth Engineers. What is going on there? Is he like on a motorbike or a push bike? I'm going to presume that this uh, open the store, display bought units. This is a river, right? So I'm going to presume that the engineers allow you to cross the river without penalty. Or similar. But my question is, where does it show me that? Research isn't available in campaign. Is it not? Okay, that would result in no losses either side. That's the artillery. Ammunition, movement points, entrenchment level. I can rename it. And where does it show me its stats? Like its range. I'm going to presume that this 4 is its range. No, that can't be right because the tank has also got 4 range. Oh, well, it does appear like it can shoot that far. Huh, interesting. Everything's got a fair amount of range. 
Or is it just showing me what the combat would be like if I was right next to them? Hmm. Let's open the store. That's a good way to find out what things can do. Motorize, mechanize, veteran, mountaineers, winter trained. Health, ammo, attack values, visibility, attacking range in hexes, one. Deploy around engineers only. Deploy around engineers. That's quite a cool thing. So you buy a deployable and then you can deploy it next to your engineers. Deploy around harbors. Huh. That's quite cool. Fighter plane, light bomber, strategic bomber, boats and submarines. Wow, that's uh, that's a lot of ships. I'm going to suggest that we don't have any cities on this map. Nope. So my question is, do the engineers do other than being able to deploy stuff next to them? Do they do anything else that's special? Doesn't seem like they do, so you don't have... Uh, Bridging. Or do you? Oh look, now they can't get across. That's the undo button, right? Nope, skip. Not allowed to undo, because I found a unit that I didn't find before. Look, these guys can't cross the river now. So the engineers do, in fact, provide river crossing. But it didn't say that anywhere. You're just sort of expected to know. If I was to restart this mission, See, these guys can move across the river now. So the engineers do provide bridging. But it doesn't seem to say anywhere on their unit card or uh, anywhere, anywhere on the unit card that they do that. Nor does it say it in the shop. Equipped with flamethrower. What does that mean? What does that do? Some sort of explanation as to what these various things do. 
would be super useful. Actually, you know, on the tooltip. Um, you know, because no one wants to go looking through a, uh, through a guide or a tutorial or a, uh, or a help screen. Not that I see a help screen anywhere. But no one wants to go looking through one of those things. Okay, somehow I should bring up a kill card there. One range, apparently. Forty five mil. It's an anti tank gun, actually, so. Seventy five mil. Okay, so it is simple. It's a, you know, minus minus numbers game. fire, right? Depot there. Capture all major victory points. Which means defending those two and taking this one. Hundred and five mil, that's gonna be artillery. Surely. Three range, yes, has to be artillery. But apparently, Premium. doesn't look like there's a bonus for um, being on the mountains in terms of artillery range. There doesn't seem to be a tool that lets me examine the terrain to see what it does. I can get the unit's stats and history. There's no, um... Oh, okay. Here, I mean, there's a terrain highlight up here. Movement cost. Tile damage modifier. Tiles production value. Okay, so I'm going to presume that minus 5 just comes directly off the attack value. But there's no range bonus for putting artillery on a hill. Which, I mean, it doesn't have to be. It's just it's something that a lot of games do do. do. Oh, 
bunker is going to take some work to bring down. These guys across the river here are going to get wrecked. That much is obvious. I think this bit here is supposed to be a defensive engagement. This is now a core unit. It will cost a hundred more money. You can make it veteran too. Total. I'm going to su suggest that it's not going to let me buy this. Oh no, it did. Cool. I just bought a massive railway gun, which I'm sure is undeployable on this map. Deployable in big cities only. Transfer a unit to any of your allies. Okay, you get full full money back for selling if, as long as you haven't. Factories and big cities only. Which asks the question. That's just a town. So you actually have to consider where you can deploy something. Deploy landmines around engineers. I, I, this is a very cool feature, actually. I don't think I've really seen something like this before. It doesn't look like there's anything deployable around small towns. Some things are deployable at medium seas. You have to tag it as a core unit each time. Hmm. I have an airfield. But it does not seem like I am able to deploy at the airfield. Deploy bought units. Nope, does not seem like this is a deployable hex. Did I make a mistake? Nope, deploy around airfields. Okay, so there's obviously additional rules here that we don't know. These guys are getting wrecked. I'm 
You can see, look, these guys cannot move back. Unless the engineer is moves. Capture all major victory. I mean, it doesn't say anything here about me not being able to deploy. So it's interesting that I can't, but anyway. That bunker is down to 50 health. told me that I wasn't going to get anything done, and I didn't. surrender for some reason? If they surrendered, there's not really been any explanation as to why they... Yeah. They surrendered, but there's not really any explanation as to why they surrendered. Oh, maybe I couldn't deploy because I was at the unit cap. Aha! Why? Why did they retreat? There wasn't really an explanation as to why they retreated. The game has changed hugely since it was called Operation Citadel. 
It certainly seems a lot cleaner and uh, certainly seems a lot closer to what we would Im expect in a modern turn-based strategy game. It looks like there's lots of content here. Let's just have a look at some of the other... This game does not shy away from huge maps. Look at the size of this map. These guys are flashing for some reason. Whoa, you can just... <laughs> this is a... <laughs> it's not being programmed with an upper limit. You can just zoom out forever. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I mean, great. You've got you've got freedom to play at whatever zoom level you like, including uh, in your face, very terrifyingly in your face. The detail on the unit cards is really good, actually. Having zoomed right in. This looks like you get to lead pretty much an invasion on Poland on all fronts. Research is not available in campaign. So you're going to have to think about every front. We've got a machine gun nest here. Now normally you would suppress such a unit with artillery. But I can't tell whether that is possible or not. So I would do minus 30 right now. And if I artillery them, minus 28. Well that's just, I guess it's just reduction in damage output based on casualties. This is a fighter plane. I'm going to presume that that's a leader. That's also a fire. Okay, so anti-aircraft guns do protect nearby units, which once again, it makes sense. Okay, look, you can see there from the little grey outline that they actually lost ammunition and fuel after being artilleried. This machine gun nest is now starting to look weaker. Oh, we could have hit from a distance, which is odd. Or could we?
Interesting. It's a battleship. The Deutschland. Oh, right, interesting. I mean, this, you know, it can't be understated. This game has improved massively since when I first looked at it. It's now... It's now mostly what you would expect from a modern World War II game. Um, and there's a lot of uh, scale here. Scope for huge battles. The intricacies of how the units interact is a little bit lost on me. And, uh, there's this whole thing about research that doesn't seem to be in campaigns. So if research is not in campaigns, what's it in? It does come with a manual, so I guess you can look up all the details, but I, I still firmly believe that everything you should need, everything you need to know should be findable from within the game. You shouldn't have to look it up. I don't doubt that in the manual it will probably... Okay, yeah, it's a pop-up internet manual. I don't doubt that, for example... Uh, yeah, in the manual it says, Engineers, act as a bridge for your units to cross rivers. Lay landlines, build bunkers, build launch sites, blow up and repair bridges, build radars. You know, it was obvious to me because I, you know, I've played a million of these games, but it's definitely not obvious from just playing the game. If this was your first, um, if this was your first game, then uh, you might be a little bit bamboozled. Let's have a look at the quick battles as well while we're while we're having the first impressions here. Wow, look at the size of this map. So you have money in production, so I guess you can just war on for as long as you like. Turn the option on in the settings. isn't available in campaigns. Have control on what technologies you want to research. Realistic planes. Planes will crash when out of fuel. That's not on by default. You can actually decide a lot of little detailed things here. Random damage modifier and it's off by default. Good man. That always pleases me when that's off by default. <laughs> I'm biased against random. Okay. So.
So. Turns to research 10. You need to research all previous missions, uh, things before researching this one. The Bishop. What an ugly, what an ugly monster of an artillery that is. It's a valentine with a friggin' box on top of it. I guess you can only research one thing at a time, right? You have no research points available, aha. Uh -huh. There are research points and we were spending them. Wow, just looking at the research tree, you've got plenty of the old World War II classics to choose from. These are very, very pretty sprites. They really are. Actually, just really good looking compared to how it was before. For 2D sprites, I mean, you can't really ask for much more. Very cool. <clears throat> so this is your, your turn-based income. So you're going to keep producing units every turn. Alright, that artillery did support this unit. So, there's also artillery support. Which, you know, I mean, once again, you would expect it. You would expect it. Okay, that did not do what I wanted it to do. I wanted him to attack the mines. Maybe that's not possible. Can the engineers not remove mines? It can't be that the only way to get rid of mines is to throw your units at them. Surely. Certainly can't saturate them with artillery. Man, it's really easy to just uh, move units onto mines. These, do these guys have anti-mine gear? Do you just move engineers onto mines? Okay, you just move engineers onto mines. That's how you disarm them. Yeah, I mean, that's actually, that's actually a good idea. It's just, you know, actually tell us that. Make them, you know, maybe make a symbol on the mines. Showing that you can move onto them to disarm them. Okay, all right, I think that's enough. It's, uh... It, this is definitely a game that has improved massively since, uh... Since we last looked at it. And it certainly looks to me like it could be, uh... A lot of fun. The unit cards especially look great. Some things are not explained very well, and so I guess you're going to have to go into the manual and read read up on all the details. Um, 
It's mostly intuitive, but there are just a few things that you would really like to know. Like, you know, artillery supports units next to it. You know, engineers on rivers actually provide bridging. The game doesn't make that clear to you. I was just kind of guessing from years of experience of playing these games. And the surrender mechanics are not obvious to me either. That's another thing. See, why? I mean, yeah, it's great we overran them. But why in particular did we overrun them? They just legged it without... I mean, they weren't... They weren't getting that badly shrekt. So there's definitely something going on in the in the rules for overrun and retreat. And I'm not quite sure what those are. Wow, damn Ladingo. Also known as target practice. But there's a lot to, I mean, there's all the things that you would expect. There's a lot to purchase. I love the idea that you deploy fortifications next to, and mines and such. You deploy this stuff next to engineers. You have what look like hero units here. But what do hero units do? Attack range in hex is 7. What, you know... This is an extremely expensive unit. I mean, I'm just guessing from the fact that they're named individuals, that they're heroes. With seven range, it's pretty crazy. It's like a battleship. Is there anywhere where I'm allowed to deploy at the moment? I guess not. I mean, I can only presume that it's an infantry unit. No. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to presume that Alexandra should be a medium city, surely. Town. Not considered to be a town. Reinforcement tile. These reinforcements cannot be deployed there.
Man, this will this a battle of this magnitude will definitely keep you busy for a long time. Which is nice. Deploy around airfields. Interesting. It's Admiral Hipper, isn't it? Three range. But apparently cannot attack that, despite being a destroyer. Probably wanted to do this first. Okay, all right then. Well, I think that's it for now. I think we've explored this. We've explored this pretty reasonably. This is definitely a game that you could get into, but just be prepared that you're going to have to go in the manual and actually check everything out. Because uh, sort of in-game intuitiveness is not quite there. And uh, the overrun rules look to me like they could really influence the game very, very, very heavily. Uh, the overrun and retreat rules, but it's not obvious to me why some units retreat and others do not, and why some surrender and others do not. I mean, it will it will probably be partially things like if a unit's made to retreat and it's got nowhere to go, it will surrender. That's what I would guess because as many games are like that, but that's not guaranteed. So, if you're going to get the game, it's called Hexes of Steel now. If you owned Operation Citadel, uh, then you'll have this game. So, you don't have to buy it again. Um, looks pretty good. Looks hugely improved on Operation Citadel. But anyway, I've got that first impressions video on my channel. So, you can always go back and see what it used to look like. That is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.